I'd like to um, present a paper in um, this year's injury about um, on the topic should unstable extraarticular distal radial fractures be treated with volar locking plates or percutaneous KYs, a topic that's been extensively debated in our x ray meetings throughout the year. Uh, it's a paper from this year from uh, the journal Injury. Uh, first, to introduce distal radial fractures are the most common, one of the most common fractures that we see. Uh, the incidence of 36.8 per 10,000 person years in women, approximately three times more common than in men, an incidence of nine per 10,000 person years. Uh, but the optimum treatment for dorsally displaced, unstable distal radial fractures still remains controversial. Uh, historically, KY fixation was used uh, in combination with external fixation uh, or dorsal uh, plating if needed. Uh, KY fixation is declining in popularity. In one um, survey that this article alludes to, uh, they uh, surveyed orthopaedic trainees in the US. Uh, the proportion of distal radial fractures treated with KYs decreased from 58% uh, in 1999 uh, to only 19% in 2007. Uh, volar locking plates offer uh, advantages of precise periarticular reconstruction, uh, avoid dorsal scarring, uh, avoid branches of the anterior uh, interosseous artery, uh, better implant coverage within the pronator fossa, and reduce tendon irritation problems. Uh, also biomechanically advantageous that the stiffness of the implant will support the physiological loads uh, placed on the wrist joint uh, during mobilisation. And there have been numerous studies previously showing advantage of volar locking plates over KYs, but no randomised trials. Uh, the two, two strongest uh, previous studies were both uh, level three uh, comparative retrospective reviews that directly compared uh, uh, volar plating with uh, KYs. Uh, one published in the journal Hand, Hand Surgery, the American version, in 2007 by Oshiga et al. Uh, looked at 62 distal radial fractures, found higher rates of radial, radial shortening with KYs, but an earlier and a early recovery in range of movement and grip strength with volar plating. And this is in an elderly population. Uh, the other paper uh, that was a level three study uh, directly comparing volar plating and, and KYs was in uh, Unfallchirurg uh, in 2006 by Voigt and Lille, which found, uh, looked at 89 uh, distal radial fractures, found no difference in outcome scores uh, between the two, and the time frame that they uh, that they followed up was a median of 26 months for the KY group and nine months uh, in the ORIF group. And the outcome scores they used was the Gartland Whirly, the DASH, and the Castain scores. They found no difference. They also, also found no difference in the radiological loss of position between the two groups. And they actually found, they found slightly better DASH scores uh, in the KY, sorry, to, there was no difference except for slightly better DASH scores in the KY group. Uh, 7 versus 17 out of a, a, um, a range of 0 to 100. Um, and they did find there's an early return to daily activities in the volar locking plate group, which is 4 versus 8 weeks. Uh, so the aims of this study, uh, the aims of the authors were to compare both functional radiological outcomes of extra-articular distal radial fractures managed using volar locking plates compared to closed manipulation and percutaneous KY fixation. The methods, the study design was a prospective randomised controlled trial run at two district general hospitals serving a patient population of approximately half a million people. Their inclusion criteria were closed, unilateral, dorsally displaced, unstable extra-articular distal radial fractures of AO type 23A2 and 23A3. They defined instability as dorsal angulation of greater than uh, 20%, uh, dorsal comminution and radial shortening greater than 4 millimetres. They excluded AO type B or C fractures, bilateral fractures, patients with multiple injuries, radiographic evidence of pre-existing hand and wrist arthritis, dementia and open injuries. Surgical technique used was a volar approach to the distal radius through the FCR standard approach, and um, they used the plate to bone technique, uh, using the plate to indirectly reduce the fracture if necessary by placing the locking screws in the distal fragment first, and then using the plate as a lever to uh, 
correct the dorsal angulation in the fracture. There was two different plates used due to funding arrangements swapping halfway through the study. So I think they started off with the Simpy's LCP 3.5 millimeter T plate, then they swapped to the Hand Innovations DVR um, anatomic plate midway through the study. Uh, the KY group, uh, standard surgical technique, closed, uh, closed reduction followed by three 1.6 millimeter KYs, two in the radial styloid, one dorsal and one volar, uh, and one dorsal wire in the ulnar corner of the radius. Uh, shown to be the most biomechanically stable configuration. Um, all fractures were reduced satisfactorily at the time of the operation, and um, especially in the K-wire group, important to note there was no crossover from the K-wire group to the volar plating group due to inability to adequately reduce the fracture uh, intraoperatively. Um, all the fractures, this is an important point, all the fractures in both groups were immobilised in a cast for six weeks. And the volar locking uh, group, there was a back slab for the first two weeks, and then this was changed to a full fibreglass cast after the wound check. So even the volar plated fractures were all immobilised. Uh, they followed up the patients clinically at three and six months, and um, the outcome scores used were the Gartland and Worley, um, a shortened version of the uh, disabilities of the arm, shoulder, and hand, or DASH score, called Quick DASH, and the clinical assessment was performed by a senior physiotherapist. So the results, uh, they, they managed to recruit 56 patients that uh, agreed to be randomised, 27 to the volar locking plate group and 29 to the K-wire group. They found no significant differences in demographics between the two groups. Uh, the median age was uh, uh, in the low to mid 60s. Uh, gender was approximately equal and um, hand dominance and fracture side uh, as shown uh, in the table. The grade of surgeon was similar in both groups. It was a consultant surgeon uh, operating in 74% of the volar plate patients and 62% of KY fixation. And there was 100% follow-up to the six-month mark in both groups. So functional outcomes, they found that were, functional outcomes were significantly better in the plate group compared to the KY group at both three and six months. So Gartland and Worley scores, uh, 17 and 16 in the plate group. Uh, three and six months, and 30 and 28 in the K-wire group uh, with a highly significant p-value. Uh, just to run through the Gartland and Worley score, these are actually quite poor um, outcomes on the Gartland and Worley score um, for both groups, um, despite the improvement in the plate group. Um, Gartland and Worley is a demerit type system for, for uh, various deformities, subjective evaluation, uh, as detailed above. Uh, objective evaluation of loss of range of movement. For loss of various range of movements, you get a, a demerit score. And, um, and for arthritis, nerve complications, and poor finger function, you also get a, a demerit score for, and the maximum score is 36. And um, so the KY group, all of them were, at three and six months, were poor. And in the plating group, um, the average or the median was, um, was fair, had fair outcomes according to the Garland and Worley score. However, improved outcomes in the plating group. Uh, the quick dash, the quick dash is, um, uh, the dash is a 30-point questionnaire with similar sorts of questions to the quick dash. However, they've... Uh, they've managed to look at the, each question in the dash statistically and see which ones correlate and which ones are basically redundant and they've managed to whittle it down to an 11 point questionnaire uh, which looks at functional, various functional tasks using the whole upper limb. Uh, to the extent that the, apologise, uh, the extent that the arm, shoulder or hand problem has interfered with social activities uh, regular work or other daily activities, uh, and symptoms of pain or neurological symptoms, as well as difficulty sleeping. Uh, the higher the score, the worse the outcome, and the range is between 0 to 100. So if you, if you have absolutely no problems, then you'll score the sum of uh, 11 responses will be 11, because 1 will be the best for everyone. Divide by 11, take 1, will be 0 times 25. Uh, and a full range from 0 to 100.
depending on the, the range of scores between one and five. So in this group, the quick dash scores were significantly better. In the plate group, there were scores of about 18 and 15 at three and six months, and the KY group 27 and 21, uh, which were both significantly, statistically significantly better in the plate group. Radiological outcomes, the, uh, as far as to summarise the, the main gist of the outcomes, the, immediately the post-operative reduction was, in terms of dorsal tilt, was better in the plate group, but there was no difference in shortening or radial inclination uh, uh, between the two groups. But in the KY group, the position progressively deteriorated uh, at six weeks, <laughs> three months and six months. The assessment is performed by two authors uh, at um, six-month intervals, so they could calculate kappa values to look at the intra-observer and the inter-observer agreement, and uh, they had kappa values of greater than 0.6, which shows uh, substantial agreement between, between the authors and the same author at different times. So these are all the p-values uh, showing the difference between the two groups. Uh, the KY and plating group. So only at the post-op, um, in the immediate post-op x-ray, uh, looking at radial inclination shortening, were the groups the same? Otherwise, they reported that the KY group had a worse, significantly worse position. Um, they haven't commented the, the couple, um, the radial inclination at six weeks and the shortening at three months uh, the values are over 0.05, and they haven't commented whether they use they used 0.05 as their threshold, presuming they used uh, a different value to 0.05, perhaps less than 0.1 as their threshold of statistical significance. But they've reported um, only those two as not being statistically significant um, superior position in the volar plating group. Uh, complications wise, in the volar plating group, they reported no complications. In the KY group. Uh, they reported a 28% complication rate, 17% rate of pin side infection, uh, superficial radial nerve palsy, 3% 3, 3 carpal tunnel syndrome in 3%, and painful migrating pin in 3%. 3% correlates to one patient in the group. Uh, the reoperation rate and the volar plate uh, group, none of the patients needed to be reoperated. But in the KY group, three of the patients need um, a second procedure which equated to a rate of 10%. And when you add the complication of the reoperation rate, it was significantly higher in the KY group. So the strength of this study, that it was prospective, randomised. Um, they had appropriate randomisation with computer-generated block, block envelopes, which they described in their manuscript. Uh, the paper was adequately powered to show the differences that they wanted to show. Um, and they had clear inclusion, exclusion criteria and clear results. The advantage this paper has over previous papers as well, uh, especially the last, um, the previous level three studies, was that they looked at a range of um, um, ages in an adult population, whereas the previous studies uh, concentrated only on the elderly population. The um, limitations of the paper, blinding was attempted in the, um, in the study, but because of um, the presence of scars, it was practically difficult, um, despite not being formally informed. I think the the outcome assessors could quite obviously see which um, treatment arm um, each patient was in. Uh, the follow-up is relatively short and tendon complications secondary to volar plating uh, can easily not manifest um, within six months. And um, the small, relatively absolute small numbers of less than 30 in each arm may be too underpowered to show the plate complication rates. The other th important thing, as I mentioned previously, is that However, on the, on the upside is that they, this paper may underestimate the functional benefit of early mobilisation in the, in the volar plating group because all of the patients, whether they were plated or K-wide, um, had a cast of mobilisation for six weeks. So to conclude, um, I mean, in, in general, I think the methodology of this paper was sound and I think it does, the results do suggest that in unstable extra-articular distal radial fractures, that there seems to be a better functional outcome uh, than KY fixation, uh, as well as better radiological outcome. 
um, as well as KY fixation having a sig significantly higher complication reoperating uh, reoperation rate than rollerplating. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well